The last video introduced us to arrays, which are these boxes of numbers, and we saw how we can print out individual values to them. Now, what if we wanted to actually print out the entire array and actually make it look nice as if we're making a chart, for example, or a table? So we're going to see how we can make a table out of our arrays. Now, we're going to have to use a for loop to do this. We can't just do it directly. So this is going to be great practice for learning a bit more about how arrays work and seeing how loops work. So we'll start up by writing one little thing. I want to just make a, a little header for our table that we're going to create. And you'll see what this is going to mean in a moment. I'm going to go here and write index. So this is going to be the, the number inside of the array. So the position, for example. So it's, remember, we start at zero like we saw last video. So this will be zero, one, two, three, four. And it'll just be the position. And I'm going to go ahead and put some spaces. And I'm going to go ahead and write value. And you can see what this is going to be in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and run this right now just to take a look at it. And we see we have index and value. And right here, I want to be able to list a bunch of numbers under each one. I want to have my 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 under the index. And I want to have the corresponding values inside of value. We need a array. We don't have one created right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create the same array I had last time. I'll write the lemon array. And remember, we don't need to write anything inside the box, unlike other programming languages. And inside here, we can put the, the values we want. I'll go ahead and put a bunch of different values here, uh, just a bunch of different things right there. Okay, so these are the values we have inside of our array. It doesn't really matter if it's in ascending order, descending order, you can have duplicates, all that doesn't matter. These are the values inside of our box of numbers. Now, how are we going to go ahead and print these out? We're going to use the for loop. And we know that a for loop is going to have three things written inside of its brackets. The first thing is going to be the value we want to start off at. So we know we're going to be starting off at zero to keep things simple. So you can write integer x and assign that a value of zero. Remember, if we have not mentioned the integer, I mean the variable x yet in our program, we do need to specify what type of data we're working with. So in this case, I'll write integer in here. You can start off in here. It doesn't make a difference. Well, we know we need to separate these things with a semicolon. And next, we're going to have to put our... Um, condition, right? When do we want to stop? And this is one way you have to think, right? We can just go ahead and say that, okay, we have five values over here. So if I were to go ahead and write x is less than five, because we start counting at zero, and because this starts counting as zero as well, we're going to get five values, right? We'll have zero, one, two, three, and four. That will work, but is there a better way that we can do this? And we can. We can write the word lemon, which is the name of our array, without the box in this case. This is the one time you're not going to write it. You'll put a dot separator here or a period, and you go ahead and write length. So this is lemon length. And this means you're going to find the length of this array, how many values you have inside of this array. You have five values, and you're automatically going to replace that over here. So it becomes the same thing as x is less than five. In this case, you're writing lemon length. And this means that if you were to say, oops, I want to add one more value inside of my array over here, you can simply do that and get away with it. Nobody is going to come bother you because now this is no longer five. You don't have to come and change this here. It's now six. So it will change with the size of your array. So we can keep the array like that as well, just to confirm this if you want. So we have all that here. And now the last thing we're going to have need is our condition. So in this case, x plus plus, I want to increase by one each time I pass through the loop. Now I'm going to go ahead and put your brackets over here for the body of the for loop. And now we have to figure out what we're going to write inside of this, right? We want to find a way to list the index number. So starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we want to have that listed over here, and we want to have the corresponding values over here. Well, this is going to take a little bit of trial and error just to make sure they line up properly. But what we're going to want to do is the first thing we want to write, we're going to want to write simply x, right? We want to put whatever the variable is, right? Because this is going to start off at zero, and it's going to go one, two, three, four, and five. So this is going to be the one that's going to be counting up for us. So we can just put that under index, and you'll see why in a moment. Now I want to add a bit of space over here. So I'm just going to put a plus to indicate that I want to add something else inside of this print. This space over here is going to allow me to make them line up. This is just aesthetics. It's really not, uh, there's no coding basis to what I'm doing uh, with that. And now we want to find a way to make sure that we can alternate each of these values. Right? We want to make sure each value gets a turn to be printed out on screen. I want to make sure that corresponds to the index number over here. Well, simple enough, we know that if we want to print out something specific inside of an array, we write the name of the array, and then we write the number that we want to print out inside. So if we want to print out position one, which is not this over here, which would be this, because remember, we start counting at position zero, then you would print out that. But we want to make sure this is dynamic and changing. So we can put x, right? Because we know that x is going to be zero here to indicate the zero position, and then it's going to be increasing by one. So this means this is going to be zero here. So I'm just going to be calling upon position zero, 23, which is going to be printed on the side. And we go ahead and actually print this out. We'll see that we're going to get this over here. Now, it's not lining up because I need more spaces. So let me just get this lining up, just purely aesthetic. One more, I think we'll do it. Let's go. That's That looks nice. That looks nice enough. A little bit of space here. So that's how we can print out an array. And I know this doesn't seem like the most practical way to do it, but that's how we have to do it. We see we have index over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have the corresponding values on each side. The 0 position, which is the first position, like right here, 23, is over there. 
125, 230, 350, 421, and 520. So exactly how we can line them up. So that's how we print out an arrays. If you have any questions about this or what we've seen in the last video regarding arrays or for loops, anything, honestly, leave in the comments below and I'll answer you as soon as possible. And we'll be looking a bit more at arrays in the next few videos.